Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Norville with your final information briefing this week from the Government Information Service. St. Lucia looks to tap into the tourism conference niche market. 14 U.S. buyers are presently exploring the island. 13 U.S. Peace Corps volunteers have committed themselves to service in St. Lucia. Caribbean Wellness Day underscores the importance of healthy lifestyles and La Marguerite celebrations to begin soon. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority, SLTA, is hosting its first meetings, incentives and corporate events, which is referred to as MICE in the tourism industry. It is a niche area of tourism that is focused around the planning and booking of groups for large events, conferences and seminars. Fourteen MICE buyers from the U.S. are presently on island visiting hotels and attractions on behalf of their clients. The SLTA contracted Connect, an Atlanta-based company, to help select the buyers who met set criteria. Each buyer represents a unique group seeking a destination with venues matching their clients' interests for 2019 and 2020. A networking breakfast held at Harbor Club on Friday with local destination management companies and staff of the SLTA got the event off to a great start. The trip, which is the first of its kind, is expected to last a period of four days. SLTA's Director of Marketing for the USA, Kelly Fontenelle Clark, highlighted the importance of such an initiative. This is very important to us, especially now we have you know, more non stop flights, we have more hotels equipped to host meetings and incentives. And all of the buyers, this is the very first time to visit the show. Um, two of them, it's the very first time to be here. So, this is phenomenal for us to bring in those buyers here to meet with our local um, DMCs um, so they can network, know what the state of the station has to offer, know what solution has to offer, experience solution, and then in turn go back home and put some. Some of the companies represented include Conference Direct and Global Synergies. These corporate trips are strategically utilized to encourage groups to achieve a specific business goal as incentives or to recognize individuals within the organization. St. Lucia Tourism Authority's acting CEO and Chief Marketing Officer Tiffany Howard expressed her excitement to see the initiative come to fruition. I'm very excited because not only did we get these amazing group of people to come here, but our DMCs have been so supportive in making sure that they have an incredible experience while they're here. For us, this is a group of people who literally represent the best companies, um, the best events that we can actually have in St. Lucia from out of the U.S. So these groups of people that they can potentially bring from these range between 70 and 300, so that's ideal for us here in St. Lucia. So we're very excited about the opportunity to be with them. One of the buyers provided some insight into her trip so far. When it comes to selling to my clients, I think the first thing we see is just the beautiful, wonderful personalities, um, the gorgeous weather, the fantastic scenery, and that's really what it's all about. It's about those experiences that you don't get to have at home. It's just the simplicity of the island actually is what really is just most amazing to me. And, you know, so, so far we are just excited to be on this journey with you guys, and I'm looking forward to what's next. The SLTA has planned a park schedule for the MICE group, enabling them to visit some properties and to experience a few of the fun things to do on island. With the regional data giving evidence to tourism continuing to be the main pillar of economic growth within OECS member states, St. Lucia is embarking on a landmark skills training initiative set to equip over 100 young people with the qualifications needed to excel within the hospitality industry. The initiative is a collaboration between Monroe College and the National Apprenticeship Program. The program has five different modules. Uh, some modules are created for people uh, according to the interest of the people. We are providing housekeeping, food and beverage, uh, bartending, uh, friend office, and events planning. These are the most popular ones. Of course, culinary is also popular. We'll be doing that in the future. Right now, we are focusing on this. So students, according to their skill, according to their interest, they will select to one of these modules 
and we'll train them. But of course, we will also give them a total global outlook of uh, what this industry is all about. The senior vice president has urged all young people to take advantage of the educational and career-based opportunity. The program includes theoretical, practical, and also internship component. We will also arrange for them to set up interviews with the cruise lines, with the hoteliers. Uh, we are going to partner with everybody, and the government of St. Lucia is going to work with us to arrange all these things. Uh, the, the focus is the young people come out of the street, use their skill, learn the skill, and go and get jobs, change their lives, and become a model citizens. 20 trainees in the U.S. Peace Corps have committed themselves to serve in the fields of education, community development, agriculture, youth development, small business development, and health education. The Peace Corps is a wondrous thing. What makes it so special, so wondrous? First, its mission, world peace and friendship always, always so relevant and important in our world. A beacon of hope, fostering connections rather than divisions between people, honoring and respecting diversity rather than fearing it. Built on the powerful recognition that what we have in common as human beings is more important and crucial than what divides us. Secondly, Peace Corps only goes where host governments, host governments invite us to serve. We thank the government of St. Lucia for inviting us over 57 years ago to come serve in this beautiful island nation. And as well, we thank the governments of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada and Dominica for doing the same 51 years ago. I am particularly pleased to see from the list of schools on the program that many of the schools where our, peace co our volunteers will serve are from outside of the city circuit. And so the volunteers are posed to receive real St. Lucia cultural experiences. And it is not watered down by city life. I hope you take advantage of that to get involved and to participate in the activities in the communities where they are placed and to become part of the school life. The Jeunet Creole, the birthday celebration, the reading month, the mathematics month, okay, the education for the democratic citizenship, participate in those things. La Wars, thank you, Your Excellency. La Wars and La Marguerite, thank you, Your Excellency. Of the 20 trainees who were sworn in on Friday, 13 will be stationed in St. Lucia and 7 in St. Vincent. First, I would like to say congratulations to the new group of soon-to-be volunteers on this important day of your swearing in. It has been a long tradition for the United States Ambassador to administer the oath of office to the new Peace Corps volunteers as they begin their service in country. It is truly a special honor to know that after this ceremony, you will go out into the local community and contributing and contribute to building a better Caribbean, which while also fostering these stronger relations with the United States. I am incredibly happy for you and proud of you for your dedication and the fact that you've given up two years of your life to a most noble endeavor. I have to say that as the American ambassador, I am very proud and honored to serve my country but I can't be everywhere at all times. So I look to you and to the current Peace Corps volunteers to be the ambassadors in your communities and parishes, to be the ones who represent the United States, to be the face of the United States, to show people what America is all about. It's important for people to build those relationships so that we have incredible bilateral relations, not only with St. Lucia, St. Vincent, but with the world, and for us to be able to demonstrate our commitment to the basic principles and ideals that America stands for. Efforts to expand St. Lucia's agricultural exports are yielding desired results. Export St. Lucia has penetrated the U.S. market with the first shipment of Bradford to Miami. 
Perino's Exports, a St. Lucia exporter with guidance and assistance from Export St. Lucia, TIPA, successfully exported a test shipment of breadfruit to Miami, Florida in the U.S. on August 28, 2018. This success is directly attributed to a workshop held in July of this year. Export St. Lucia hosted an export into the USA workshop at the Finance Administrative Center in Castries. Participants benefited from one-on-one sessions with industry experts in areas such as packaging, labeling, and other product specifications tailored for U.S. market entry. Over the last few years, it has been recognized that the demands for produce has grown significantly in foreign markets, and this latest success is also testament to the MOU signed between Export St. Lucia and the Department of Agriculture. The efforts of Export St. Lucia, coupled with the tenacity of a local exporter and the interest and persistence of a United States buyer, has ripped dividends of this workshop in quick time. Mr. Emery Downey of Toro Imports, during the last week of August, received 500 kilograms of breadfruit from St. Lucia, a much-coveted fruit in the USA. This test shipment has passed with flying colors, much to the delight of all involved. Thank you to the Trade Export Agency of St. Lucia, TEPA. It was a huge success. Buyers were more, shipment went better than expected. I'm going to ship as much as I can until you guys went out of it. Uh, everyone here was very happy, and I'm, I'm getting phone calls all day about more. So uh, keep it up, and um, I look forward to seeing you guys soon, and thanks again. Perino's Exports has expressed tremendous thanks towards Export St. Lucia for the various avenues of help that have been derived as a result of the partnership. The company revealed that prior to the services offered by Expo St. Lucia, the business which started in 1992 experienced a number of challenges before it could even get off the ground. Since they were directly involved with exporting um, generally for St. Lucia, I find that was a good opportunity to, you know, find out what was the... uh, what was what their work entails and how could they assist us in better able to export more produce from St. Lucia. I have gained a, a contact in the U.S. and I did a more or less trial shipment and the result was very good. So I'm hoping that Tipa and I can develop a greater relationship where more produce can be exported to the U.S., which is the most difficult market for us. While geographically close, St. Lucia's exports to the United States have remained low. The major exporters are in condiments and fresh agricultural produce. Very few St. Lucian exporters meet the requirements needed to enter the U.S. market. Furthermore, even fewer can meet the marketing revenues needed to sustain market entry. With, with this test shipment, um, the, the staff of Export St. Lucia basically went through the entire stages from contacting the distributor to finding the shipping logistics, the, the actual freight weight, um, the cost. Everything was, was, was basically done and recorded in-house. Officials of Export St. Lucia, TIPA, reiterated the agency's commitment to the expansion of exports in markets such as the U.S., as it continues to chart a course with its mandate to increase the aggregate volume and quality of exports coming from St. Lucia. For Export St. Lucia TIPA, Jason Darius reporting. Ten prisoners were on Thursday, September 6, escorted from the Bordelais Correctional Facility under heavy security in compliance with arrangements to ensure they were safely repatriated to the British Virgin Islands, BVI. Prison officers from the BVI formed part of the escort from the beginning to completion of the prisoner's journey. A total of 21 inmates were conveyed to St. Lucia from the BVI due to extensive damage to the prison by Hurricane Irma in September 2017. The first repatriation exercise on August 16, 2018 was carried out seamlessly, much like Thursdays. The government of St. Lucia has been commended for its humanitarian gesture towards the BVI in the aftermath of the catastrophic Hurricane Irma. Leaders of faith-based organizations from around the island met Friday to discuss matters related to the policy for faith-based organizations. The policy seeks to regulate, support, and monitor all aspects of the relationship between government and faith-based organizations. Today's purpose is to actually review that policy document. Um, It is mandated within the document itself that the ministry with responsibility for faith-based organizations convene a national stakeholder consultation where we will hear the prevailing issues, 
surrounding the faith-based organization's affairs, the, the climate of the day. And um, we do appreciate that there are several dynamics and several changing issues that would um, be brought into focus today. And coming out of that, we would have some guidance as to what do the faith-based leaders want to see revised in that policy document. One of the main purposes for this meeting today is to elect um, representatives to sit on a nine-member policy advisory committee. So the way forward is the policy advisory committee is going to be having in-house closed sessions to continue the discussions for what the revision should be in that policy document and then we come back to a second national stakeholder consultation where we're going to present a first draft of that revised policy. This is Nation Beat. SLASPA holds its annual scholarship program and La Marguerite celebrations to begin soon. Details are coming up next. Everyone is at risk for getting a foodborne illness. While most foodborne illness cases are mild and go unreported, long-term health complications and even death can occur from a foodborne illness. Foodborne illnesses are caused by contamination of food at any stage of preparation. If you are a food handler involved in home-based food production, meat, fish, chicken or a big shop, as a food vendor, how you prepare food can put your customers at risk. Do you know the risks and how to avoid them? The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards can help you. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. Scholarships covering expenses for the academic lives of the children of employees at the St. Lucia Air and Seaport Authority have been handed out. Anissa Antoine reports on the award ceremony. The St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, SLASPA, has provided financial assistance to children of their employees through their annual scholarship program. The awarding ceremony was held on Thursday, September 7, 2018. The beneficiaries were chosen based on the 2018 results for the Common Entrance and Caribbean Examination Council CXC examinations. We have gathered here not just to celebrate the achievements of our students, but to give due regard to our values and morals, which, all, which awards exemplify like discipline, compassion, and zeal for learning. For the past 20 years, the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority have recognized outstanding students for their hard work and dedication. This is, very, this is a very important event, as the authority has seen the need to encourage youthful progress and education of our children, of our employees' children. As such, it has seen the need to develop a policy that rewards the top five performers of employees' children at the island's common entrance exam with an annual scholarship. The St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority has been recognizing students who have excelled in their academic studies. To date, 132 students have benefited from the SLASPA scholarship program. This scholarship has motivated me to maintain or even go beyond my standard of academic performance as I felt that I only did not have to make myself and my parents proud but also this organization. It really is a privilege to hold a scholarship awarded by SASPA. I would like you to utilize this prestigious opportunity as an incentive to be determined and persevere in your studies so that you can retain this benefit during your tenure at your various schools. 
I strongly believe maintaining good grades and being a model student is the best way I can continue to express appreciation and gratitude to SLASPA for this great act of kindness. This gift from SLASPA reminds me of one line my parents always repeated to us. Hard and honest work pays. This scholarship is certainly a living testimony to that fact. Considering I am among a number of other scholarship recipients, let me take this opportunity on their behalf to express profound gratitude to the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority for the valuable support extended to us. We will try our best to make ourselves, our parents, and you, Slasper, proud. This year, a total of seven new students will be receiving financial aid for the duration of their tenure at the secondary and tertiary levels. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. St. Lucia will join the rest of the region in observing Caribbean Wellness Day, celebrated annually on the second Saturday of September. Miguel Morissette reports. This is the 11th time that St. Lucia will be observing Caribbean Wellness Day since its inauguration in September 2007. This annual observance provides an opportunity to increase awareness and sensitize the public of the social and economic impact of non-communicable diseases, NCD. As part of this year's observance, the Ministry of Health and Wellness will play its part by hosting several activities. Dr. Shana Sir Filbert is the NCD focal point. This year, we're doing things a little bit differently, and we're so happy to announce that we are actually going to start off things on the 9th of September at the Odd Saint Pentecostal Church. We're going to have a church service. Of course, we know that mental health is no different from the rest of the health. We want, we're focusing on the whole person. So we want people to, of course, get back to basics. We're inviting all our stakeholders, um, our Ministry of Health personnel, to the church service where we'll actually put God first as we celebrate Caribbean Wellness Day. And after that, on the 10th, of September, we are actually going to have our official launch of Caribbean Wellness Day. That will take place at Sanders Grand. That will include um, Ministry of Health staff, but also we will be looking at all those persons, um, NGOs included, um, business places, all those people who have contributed to making NCDs their business, who've actually done something. So we're actually going to be honoring them. We're going to be giving gifts and so on at that launching and we're also going to be letting people know about what other activities we are going to be having at that that um, official launch ministry officials are calling on every man woman and child to play their part by engaging in physical activities healthy eating and the elimination of tobacco use to reduce the risk factors associated with ncds the 2018 theme for caribbean wellness day is be healthy, stay healthy, it's your job. From the communications unit in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Miguel Morissette reporting. The St. Lucia Alzheimer's and Dementia Association is urging the citizenry of St. Lucia to find out more about the condition and to seek medical advice immediately if unsure as to whether the disease could be affecting themselves or family member. The president of the association notes that the brain changes as we age. Most of us eventually notice some slowed thinking and occasional problems with remembering certain things. However, serious memory loss, confusion, and other major changes in the way our minds work may be a sign that brain cells are failing. There are symptoms, and as we age, our brain slows down, mm -hmm. but um, that doesn't mean it stops. Mm -hmm. So when we're having little problems with forgetting, we usually remember later. Mm -hmm. If we're not forgetting at all, I mean, if we're forgetting and not remembering at all, <clears throat> then that's a, a huge symptom, like things that we normally do. For instance, mm -hmm. when we're older, we still cook and do certain things mm -hmm. in the kitchen, mm -hmm. <clears throat> make certain meals. If we're starting to skip ingredients, then mm -hmm. there's a problem, even mm -hmm. at 65 and older, because mm -hmm. that's something we just don't normally, that's an automatic remember that's an automatic memory at an advanced stage the disease causes mood and behavior changes deepening confusion about events time and place unfounded suspicions about family friends and caregivers 
It can also lead to difficulty speaking, swallowing, and walking. Before symptoms reach this stage, it is advised that medical help is sought. Go to the doctor and um, be tested because there's a lot of symptoms of dementia that mimic um, the disease. <clears throat> but things like um, vitamin deficiency, mm -hmm. hormonal imbalances, mm -hmm. all of those can contribute to the same type of symptoms. Oh, okay. The challenge with that is if you leave it alone, even stress can cause that. Um, if you leave it alone and let it fester and it just builds up and builds up, then um, it can develop into a type of dementia. World Alzheimer's Month is recognized during the month of September, while World Alzheimer's Day falls on September 21. St. Lucians can look forward to Creole Market and La Marguerite Fowl Festival as part of Creole Heritage Month. The Cultural Development Foundation, CDF, will spearhead the two events during Creole Heritage Month. Details of the events were unveiled at a press briefing hosted by the CDF. Well, of the sayers that will be staged, and of course we will include the traditional dance, a parade, and we are happy to have the Castries Constituency Council as one of our collaborators. And of course, as you may have heard, we're trying to bring agencies together so that we can all work together to achieve the same goal. And of course, the Fed Day, which it has the school's component and a church service. It begins with a church service. This year, La Margaret will be held in Larissus. And of course, the presentations by the groups. In an effort to keep in line with the tradition, La Marguerite cuisine will also be available. Another component of Creole Heritage Month, Creole Market, will be held at the Rodney Bay Strip. And this event will be held for two days, the 25th and, and 26th of October. It will start from morning and go on into the evening. It is really about authentic St. Lucian products, not made in China. Things that St. Lucian designers, crafters, and these products will be on sale for two days. So this is a place where you will see the demonstration of how, let's say, the cold pot is made. This is a place where you can pick up your madras shirt, your skirt, seamstresses will be there available. So this is our... The theme for Creole Heritage Month is Discover St. Lucia, Discover Yourself. And that's Nation Beat. Join us next time as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. I am Janelle Norville.